Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India must be tired by now we have been deriving derivatives and you have to be patient we will be doing it for another maybe one or two lectures then we will come back to a session which is our popular session man ki baat we will summarize what we were doing so far in the meantime one of my TA has solved a problem on second order system these things are done to make you habitual of solving some standard equations. Do not give too much weightage on that, try to understand the result because those we will be using in our future uh, discussions. Right? So, if you recall, we had u derivative, we have alpha derivative. And then alpha dot derivatives, then delta derivatives. We have completed up to this. Today we will be discussing about alpha dot derivative, right? What is this alpha dot and why it is important? Please understand if this is the wing and if it sees an angle of attack alpha. Theoretically speaking, for normal flight, a normal type of maneuver, the lift buildup is not instantaneous. It takes time for pressure distribution to happen and then the lift gets activated. However, in this case of alpha dot derivative, we will assume that as soon as the wing sees or any component sees angle of attack, the alpha buildup, alpha buildup or strictly speaking lift buildup is instantaneous. Okay. This is an uh, assumption which is true for the type of motion we are talking about, but if there is a highly oscillatory motion, right, then this statement may not be very correct. However, for our case for small perturbations, we will assume that lift build up is instantaneous. Second thing which you should also understand as there is a lift over the wing or as there is a pressure distribution over the wing which causes lift, you are aware that there will be wing tip vortices. Okay. Remember, because of pressure distribution or pressure differences from the between the lower and the top surface of the wing and these vortices will induce a downwash at tail. So, what these vortices will do? These vortices will give downwash at tail. That means, if there were no such wing tip vortices, then suppose this alpha was 5 degree seen by the wing, then the tail also will see 5 degree. No downwash if it was like that, but because of this downwash, there will be a downward component of relative air velocity. So, this angle now with downwash it will be 5 degree minus epsilon and epsilon is the downwash angle in degrees. This is 1. So, effectively the angle of attack at the tail changes. 
but there is another salient point which you need to understand. If I ask this question who is responsible for this epsilon, we know that it is because of wing t vortices and if I take the distance between A c of the wing and let us say A c of the tail, this distance if I take I say x h. So, whatever happening at the tail is because of something has happened at the wing at the time x h by v earlier. Is this part clear or no? Let us understand. Suppose I am analyzing the phenomena at time t, t at second. What will happen? At t at second, some wing t vortices will be generated. They will travel and it is a fair assumption to believe they travel with the speed v of the airplane and it will take finite time which is roughly distance by speed. So, after that time only this alpha of the tail will get modified. Okay. That means, if I am analyzing at time t, I should be careful when I take this epsilon, I should know that this epsilon is caused this much of time earlier. Right. And that is why this alpha dot derivative becomes important and we will now try to formulate it. And what are those derivatives? We will try to find out alpha C L alpha dot, which is nothing but D C L by D alpha dot C by 2 u 1 C D alpha dot, which is D C D B by D alpha dot C by 2 u 1 and C M alpha dot, which is D C M by D alpha dot C by 2 u 1. By now, you know why we are putting alpha dot c by 2 u 1? Because alpha dot has a dimension, we want to operate in a non dimensional quantity. So, alpha dot c by 2 u 1 is a non dimensional quantity. Right. With this understanding, let us see how do we model it. If I try to know what is delta epsilon, I can write it as minus d epsilon by d alpha into alpha dot into delta t. If you see this carefully, this is d epsilon by d alpha into delta alpha, which I am writing as d epsilon by d alpha into d alpha by d t into delta t and this is nothing but alpha dot delta t. All these linear approximations helping us to write like this. Okay. Why this minus sign? Because you know downwash will actually change the angle of attack. Okay. Now, let us see. If I try to find out d f a x by d alpha dot c by 2 u 1, this will be nothing but minus c d alpha dot into q bar into s. I hope you understand this, because we are writing f a x, go back to our earlier lecture, this will be f a x will be q bar s c x. And C x, so D f A x by D alpha dot C by 2 u 1 will be D C x by D alpha dot C by 2 u 1 into q bar s. And you know approximately C x equal to minus C d, so D C x by D alpha dot C by 2 u 1 is nothing but minus d c d 
by d alpha dot c by 2 u 1. That is how this c d alpha dot is coming here. Fortunately, for most of the conventional airplane, it is not a bad idea to assume that c d alpha dot is almost 0 or can be neglected. So, our life becomes simpler. Okay. So, this derivative d f x by d alpha dot c by 2 u 1, we can put it to 0 for most of our conventional airplane. Now, comes to C L alpha dot. Let us see what is C L alpha dot. The moment I see C L and since we are working on a with x y z axis, so I will start with f a z. f a z will be equal to q bar s c z and d f a z by d alpha dot c by 2 u 1 would be equal to d c z by d alpha dot c by 2 u 1 into q 1 into s. Why this q 1? Because I know this has to be evaluated at steady state. At steady state q becomes q 1. What was the steady state? For our analysis, it is the cruise, right? So whatever the cruise speed was there, the dynamic pressure corresponding to that cruise speed at a given altitude at cruise is Q1. Right? So these things are well known to you. And after this, what we do? We write it as Cz alpha dot Q1 bar s, and now see what is delta C L tail? That will be minus C L alpha tail into delta epsilon. Remember, I told you because of wing tip vortices, the tail angle of attack will be reduced by epsilon. So, the moment it reduced by epsilon, so there is a reduction in the lift the tail. So, that is why this is minus sign minus C L alpha tail into delta epsilon. No issues. Now, this I can write as minus C L alpha tail and for delta epsilon, we have derived an expression. We can write it as d epsilon by d alpha into alpha dot into L t by u 1 delta C L t, correct? C L alpha tail into delta epsilon, delta epsilon is nothing but, we call delta epsilon nothing but d epsilon by d alpha into delta alpha, which I can write as d epsilon by d alpha into d alpha by d t into delta t and delta t you are assuming as l t by u 1. Although, initially we, start, we took the distance from the a c of the wing to a c of the tail, but we are doing an approximation. This l t is distance between c g and a c of the tail and since c g of the airplane and a c of the wing are fairly close. So, this uh, approximation is also not bad. Okay. Remember, whenever you talk about C L due to alpha dot in terms of whole aircraft, this is at the tail. For the whole aircraft, you know C L has to be defined as lift by half rho v square s respect to free stream. Okay. So, what will happen? The lift at the tail because of delta C L T will be half rho v square at tail s tail into delta C L T, correct? Half rho v square at tail, but when I try to talk about C L based on the whole aircraft, 
the contribution of tail, I have to non dimensionalize this with respect to free stream dynamic pressure and wing area. So, this will become half rho v square tail into s tail delta C L T divided by half rho v square free stream into s wing. Correct? So, this is C L because of tail. Now, from here what we do is if I write C L because of tail which is non dimensionalized in the standard form we write half rho v square tail then s tail delta C L tail by half rho v square free stream free stream which is standard into s of wing and I substitute the expression for delta C L T from here here then I can write C L tail as C L alpha tail to d epsilon by d alpha into alpha dot into L T by u 1 into neta T into S tail by S w. You may be wondering where this minus sign has gone right. Please understand the expression of delta epsilon had a minus sign here which I missed it here the minus sign here. So, there is a minus sign here the reduction and that is how the minus sign got absorbed clear. This delta epsilon if you see earlier I had just shown that is minus d epsilon by d alpha into delta alpha which is minus d epsilon by d alpha into alpha dot into L t by u 1 and this minus sign and this minus sign get cancelled and you get an expression like this. Now, please understand this C L T is due to alpha dot ok that is very important and we were working in terms of D F Z if F A Z uh, this should not be x this is F Z by D alpha dot. So, we are looking for D Z alpha dot or C Z alpha dot to be more precise and which is nothing but d c z by d alpha dot c by 2 u 1. So, we have to work in terms of c z alpha dot, but we know that c z alpha dot is approximately c l alpha dot. So, this will be equal this will be used and I can differentiate this to get d c l by d alpha dot c by 2 u 1 as c l alpha tail into d epsilon by d alpha into l t 2 by c into neta t s t by s w. Let me check if I take a derivative with respect to alpha dot c by 2 u 1 in this case c l alpha tail will be this d epsilon by ok l t will be there and that is if I quickly check c l alpha tail into d epsilon by d alpha then alpha dot l t by u 1 neta t s t by s w divided by alpha dot c by 2 u 1 this is nothing but C L alpha dot because linear I can just divide. So, I see that this 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 man goes off 2 goes to numerator u 1 u 1 gets cancelled. So, I have L t by C it is same thing you see here 2 comes here L t by C is here neta t s t by w fantastic right. It is so nasty, but once you get a correct result you start loving it. Now, 
once I know this is C L alpha dot, my aim is to find C z alpha dot. So, I will write C z alpha dot which is equal to d C z by d alpha dot C by 2 u 1 which will be equal to just minus C L alpha dot. So, minus C L alpha tail into d epsilon by d alpha into 2 into L t by C nita t s tail by s w. Very good expression. This is fine. Now, it is imperative that from here if you see this C L alpha dot which is nothing but minus C z alpha dot that will be C L alpha t d epsilon by d alpha into 2 into L t by C bar into nita t to S t by S w. You see the minus sign is no more here because C z alpha dot is minus C L alpha dot. right? And let us see how to compute this C L alpha tail we know once we know tail d epsilon by d alpha for low speed this is this can be by C L alpha wing by pi aspect ratio E or you can get this value through internal testing L T you know nita T you know ratio of dynamic pressure so everything is known. So, at the design stage you know the value of C L alpha dot that is very important. Similarly, if I want to find out C M alpha dot which is D C M by D alpha dot C by 2 u 1 you could see who is causing C M alpha dot C M alpha dot is coming because of C L alpha dot it is a force in non dimensional sense it is a moment in non dimensional sense. So, I have to just multiply this with the moment arm. So, I will write this is C L alpha tail d epsilon by d alpha. So, 2 I put here L t by C nita t S t by S w into L t by C and we have to put a minus sign here. You can easily see from here that if multiply by L t by C and take appropriate sign. So, C m alpha dot will be minus 2 C l alpha t d epsilon by d alpha L t by C nita t S t L t by S w and you should also understand this is nothing but tail volume ratio V h. So, as a designer you know how to find out the value of C m alpha dot and that is minus 2 C l alpha tail which you know d epsilon by d alpha you know and rest of the parameters you know. Right. Why this sign is negative that question has to be answered because we have agreed that whatever we are doing when we are trying to calculate this alpha dot derivative in a uh, downwards lag approach the something has happened at time L t by v earlier that means at that time the tail had a larger angle of attack right corresponding to that time. So, that larger angle of attack will give a nose down moment or pitch down moment. So, this is minus sign. Are you clear with it? We are, this is the tail and this is the wing all this thing what you are deriving we are saying whatever happening here in terms of shedding vortices it takes time L t by u 1 to reach here. That means, if you are analyzing at time t that means, those influence has now reached here. So, that means, this angle is more than what would have been. So, that additional force will give a nose down moment, nose down pitching moment. So, this minus sign we have to put here, correct. So, we have now done C m alpha dot, C l alpha dot and typically you will find the C m alpha dot value for most of the low speed airplane around 20 to 30 percent of C m q derivative. Okay. Right. 